Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, this morning we're going to take a look at the Hubson Zeno 2. This is a drone that's been on the market since early 2020. I have not reviewed it in the past. I thought now is a good time to review it because it's a Hubson. Hubson has a tendency to put products out and they're not really ready for prime time. This one was no different. If you go and watch any YouTube reviews on this when it first came out, you'd probably never buy this drone because it didn't perform very well. It had so many glitches and problems. But Hey, we're in the month of June now, so Hubson should have fixed them all, right? So let's review this today. Here we go. All right, so what's different with the Zeno 2 compared to the Hubson Zeno and the Zeno Pro? Well, the first thing, those other drones, you could not fly them indoors because they did not have sensors to fly indoors, but the Zeno 2 has sensors right here. You've got some IR sensors and an optical flow sensor, so you can actually fly this indoors, which is great. Second thing is they increase the range. This here now goes zoom, eight kilometers, so that's five miles. So you can get it pretty far away. At least that's what the specs say. Flight time is up to 33 minutes, which is pretty decent. The camera sensor is still a half inch camera sensor, but they've changed it. So now it's uh, got a better processor. So you get better colors, you get better frame rates. So the other drones could do 4K 30 frames per second. This can do 4K 60 frames per second. In the unboxing that comes at the end of this video, I'll show you the three drones together and you can check out size differences and what's a little bit different on them. And the other thing that's different would be the price because it is new and it has newer technology. So if you jump back to the Hubson Zeno, the Hubson Zeno is $300 US. Zeno Pro is $400 US and this is around the $500 US mark. The controller on the Hubson Zeno and the Zeno Pro is always very toy-like, you know, it didn't look very good, no markings, but the Zeno 2, they have a nice display in it and it's a really good display. You can see it outside, it's just telemetry, but at least it's decent. If ever the app dies on the Hubson Zeno 2, which it does sometimes, at least you have the telemetry to get you back home nice and safe. The joysticks are here underneath. You can see them down there. The antennas are real. You could fit a large cell phone in here, but you'll never get an iPad mini in that thing. On the front here, they have a button that's now well marked and it actually Actually works. This will give you sport mode, normal mode, and tripod mode with that button. In the unboxing you'll see everything that comes with the Hubson Zeno 2. It does come with a case and a bunch of other goodies so uh, stay tuned for the unboxing at the end of this video. Next thing I'm going to do is power up the Zeno and show you the app. So the app you want to use for this is the X Hubson 2. All right so here we go. Here's my phone and here's the controller and I'm going to show you the phone screen on this here thing. I'll put it over here. I'll just sit over here. So the phone screen will be up there. All right, all you have to know when you're looking at the Hubson Zeno app is that it says ready to fly at the top. All of those things from, you see the letter N all the way over and then it goes off and says the number of satellites 16, all that stuff, you can touch any of that. So if I touch like the satellites, here, I get that. No matter what you touch at the top of the screen, you will get a display showing you the details of exactly what that means. Now, if I go down the left-hand side, it looks like a big uh, cross, big X, that's your mode. So if I touch that, those are all my flight modes. So I'll just go back to normal mode. And then you have your takeoff button down below that. If you go down to the very bottom left, that would be your radar. And I can change it to a map and I can change it even bigger to a bigger map, just going back. So you have all those settings and I can change it back to radar. Along the bottom is gonna be your speed and your distance. And then going all the way to the right, those are my photos and videos I've taken. If I touch that button, then coming up that big white circle, that's gonna be start to take a picture or a video. You can change it on the screen. Watch this, I'll change it to video mode. There we go, I'm in video mode now. It's a red button, white button is for picture. And if I come up higher, that's my settings. There's a little button with a bunch of lines. That's gonna give me all my camera settings right there. And you can see if I go video resolution, let's make sure I'm in the right one, 4K, which is good, uh, and frame rate. It always defaults to 60, but I'm gonna shoot this in 30 because this video is in 30 frames per second. Now looking at my screen, you have this goofy little thing right beside the camera settings. It looks like a little circle with a big arrow on it. That's headless mode, don't touch that. And then at the top right is your actual settings for the drone to set everything up. Hopefully mine are all set up correctly. I've already gone through this and set all sorts of things up. And as long as it didn't forget them, life is good. So let's hop out of that. All right, so we're pretty much ready to fly. All right, I only have one battery for this. So what I show you here is all I can show you on one battery. So here we go, pull these out and we start up. Refreshed the return point. Please mind the return position. So the first thing you'll notice with the Hubson Zeno is it's pretty darn stable. The only thing I notice sometimes is it will rise and lower there, it's rising now. But from left to right, it's pretty stable. It does like to go up and down a little bit as it sits there. The other thing you'll notice is, you notice when I walk around, you don't hear beeping? 
that's because there's no obstacle avoidance on the Hobson Zeno. It is a drone with very few sensors, it's very basic, it's to just to get you out flying and to take photos. So, speaking of that, let's go uh, check out some of the features. First feature on here would be the camera. Here it is recording me right now at 4K 30 frames per second. I'm sure the image looks great because I've already taken this out many times and recorded images with it and they all look good. The only image that does not look great with the Hubson Zeno 2, but it's true of all Hubson Zeno products, is the photo mode. Photos, eh, for some reason Hubson never got the photos correct. They look okay, but they're not great, which you would expect. Same is true if you drop the resolution to 1080p. If I film in 1080p, it doesn't look super, super great. It looks okay, but it doesn't look great. It looks kind of grainy for some reason. I don't know why that is, but 4K 30 and 4K 60 look a-okay awesome. Okay, the first feature I want to show you is the active track because I have some trees here and I want to show you how it works. So let's go into follow mode. Follow mode. We have two. We have follow me and active track. I'm going to active track, active track, understood. And I'm going to draw a box around me. And I should be able to hit go. And there we go. So now this will follow me. I think I have it high enough so it doesn't hit a tree. So the active track on here is pretty decent. I'm just going to take it up a little higher so it's above these trees because there's no obstacle avoidance. There we go. Now I can't hit any tree. All right. So let me just show you active track. So you're walking along. Life is good. See how it has me in the picture still? Now watch what happens if I get lost by walking through trees. Uh-oh. 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 It has lost me. And it just stays there because I can't figure out where I am. Let me come back here. Oh, I'm over here now. <laughs> so... Hang on a sec. Turn you. I'm over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the better tracking system it has. So let me go stop that. Active track exited. And I'm going to go into follow me. And this time I'm going to pick follow me, not active track. There we go. Next step. Let's check my phone. Make sure it's good. It takes a second. And we go follow me. Execute immediately. And there we go. So I'm going to hide this so you can see what's going on and drones up there now watch this i'm going to walk through these trees right under them it should follow me no matter what i'm going under trees i'm coming out different areas <laughs> there it is it's still got me i'm going under all these trees no problem whatsoever and i'll come out in the open there we go. Eventually it'll get me in the center of the picture, but there we go. I'm a little bit to the side. There she is up there. I'm watching it go along under, behind the trees. It's going to come out. still following me. There it is. So it's got me. No problem. All right. All right, let me show you another one that people might use. Waypoint mode is pretty cool, but I'm not going to do it because I don't have enough battery power to show you everything. So waypoint mission planning, it's really simple. You, this is me down here. I'm just zooming out, zooming into me. So the H is where I took off, the drone is away from the H, and the red dot is pretty much probably where I am, I believe. So on the right-hand side is a pen. Click that. I'm going to draw a line. Those are my waypoints. One, two, three, four. On the right-hand side, I can put a point of interest. And a point of interest means I want the drone to face that direction, so I'll put it over here. So now it has to focus on those directions. Watch if I touch any of these points. I can set the height and the hover time for each one. You can also delete your waypoints, hit the garbage can, and go to the one with a dot in it and say I want to get rid of waypoint number two. Touch it, there it's gone. And when I want to execute the waypoints, at the bottom right it says done, and then submit, and that would be good, but I'm just going to delete everything right now. Delete, gone, don't want it, and let's go back. 
Orbit mode is one that everybody likes to use. Got it, so orbit mode, let's go over here. We have a choice, you could orbit me or orbit something else. I guess there's nothing else to orbit here, so I'm gonna orbit me. So I'll bring the drone over, it's on top of me, really simple. I'll make a big orbit here. Next step, now I gotta do the radius, just take it back, how big do I want the circle to be? That looks like a good circle. And make sure it's on me and execute it immediately. And there's all my good stuff. Here we go, I'm gonna hide that so we don't see it. And it's doing it, see it's turning up there? I can speed it up, slow it down, I can change the height of the orbit. Let's see, I'll bring it down. So that's a better orbit, nice and low like that. And uh, there we go. So I'm just gonna hop out of that, hit stop. What else can I show you on here? Orbit mode, uh, follow mode, we did that. Create a video, let me show you that really quick. So you can do a panorama shot or comet. So panorama shot is pretty much what I just did. It's like an orbit mode, but I reverse the drone and have it look outwards, vice inwards, because you want a panorama and you can pick a 90 degree panorama, 180 degree panorama as you wish, but I'll do comet. Comet is much cooler. So draw a box around me, there we go. And I wanna go clockwise, that's good, go. And it should go. Do a comet. Now, the only thing I'm gonna watch is it doesn't hit the trees over there. So a comet is just gonna go around me. It's gonna stay on me and it's gonna go up and down. So now it's going up and out and then it should come back and down. You know, we did have sun out here earlier, but the sun just seems to have gone away. So this is a good example of how this does when there's not a lot of sunlight. There we go, we should be coming to an end because it always does a perfect 360 and stops where it started, which is right about there. There we go, we're all good. Next one, so that's creative line fly mode. This one here, um, I'm not sure how many people would use this. So our drone's up there, line fly mode. I'm gonna leave it at zero so it goes straight. Distance, I want it to go out, uh, I'll put 307. I'm gonna stop at height. I'm gonna put the height at, I don't know, 30 meters, 29 meters. Speed really slow, preview the route. There we go, you can see it's gonna go way out over the water if I let it go the whole way. Execute, and there we go. It's going now you can see in the video so while it's flying I can move the camera down or up so this is why you want to do it it's going to the uh, preset direction and height that I told it to I can move the I can yaw the drone to the left as you see here as I'm flying see still moving I'm gonna go right out over the water and I can yaw it to the right that's a lot faster there we go so basically it's like fly the drone in a direction and let me play with the camera while it's working there we go. So I'm going to stop this now. Panoramic photo. This one's really weird. It says it supports multi-shooting modes, records photos to the TF card, that's your micro SD card, and export. I got it. So I click on that. Look at the bottom. It can do a sphere, a 180, a vertical, a horizon. So basically it takes a pile of photos and then you would think it would stitch them together, but it doesn't. I've done this many times. It's puts all the photos on the memory card and I have to stitch them together in my own, own software. So here's a panorama photo I've already stitched together. Check this out. Okay, hyperlapse mode, we're all used to that one. So we have free, I can fly it. It's gonna take a bunch of pictures and turn into a video. I'll put circle, I got it. So now go and it should do the little hyperlapse. So I'm going to show you this little button here, FNS. So right now this is normal speed. Let me just go back here. So that'd be your normal speed. That's what I've been flying around at. Switch to film mode. So the film mode is sort of like the tripod, so this should be slower. It is. Look at that. Could film nicely. I'll just spin it around to show you how nice it is. Nice sweeping turns. Oh yeah, I've got it on full tilt here. Look at that. So the film mode is pretty darn decent. You can get some nice shots with that. There we go, coming by me and going around. All right, we'll switch to sport. So sport, here we go. That would be the high speed mode. So I'm taking it out ahead. Hopefully there's no posts or anything in the way or else it's gonna bonk into them. There we go, so that's, but whoa, look at the birds go. All right, next thing we'll try is the return to home. It's uh, over there. So I'm gonna hit the return to home button on here, which is this one, see what happens. I'll turn off the record, see if it can find the landing pad. Return to home. There she goes. So it says if you want it to land back on the landing pad, it needs a lot of light. It's kind of dull out right now. And it says, turn off the record. I do have the record off so that the camera can look down and find the landing pad. So let's see where it's gonna land. 
Okay, it's looking down automatically. Is it going to find the landing pad? I can see it on my display on my phone. It sees there's a landing pad, but I don't see it cluing in that the big H is there. Nope, it's going to miss it. It does not see it. Totally missed it. So there's the H and that's where it is. So my guess is if I had a different landing pad, like, you know, a round one that just has a huge H on it, then it would work because it says it looks for the letter H and that H on that landing pad is rather small. So a big H and it probably works perfect. Okay, another return to home. Here we go. Return to home. And then what I want to see is if the drone up there is going to land on the H. I have a different landing pad here. Look for the H, look for the H. Okay, it's looking down and it can't find it. Oh, 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 I think it found it. No, it found the water. It's looking for an H. Oh, it's blown out. I think it's found it. There it goes, it's found it. This is one shot. You land in the water or you land on the H. <laughs> What's it gonna be? Oh, it's not looking good. Not looking good. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. No, 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 no. Can I abort this? Yeah. <laughs> that's not good. Let's put you over there. I'm going to help you out. <laughs> You're going over there. And now I've messed it up. Sand everywhere. All right. So the H was there. It did see it, but the sun blew it out. It looked like it was just blown out, like it's overexposed. So I don't think it could make out the H. It did catch it though. So I don't know. Trial and error. Oh yeah, so now the sun comes out. Now the sun comes out. Oh, now the sun's gone away. Okay, I spoke too soon. So what do I think about the Hubson Zeno 2? Well, you know, I just flew it and I've flown it several times since I've had it. Here, let me get rid of this hat. Uh, if you see a red mark on my head, that's the hat does that because of the camera in the front. So the Zeno 2. I don't get 33 minutes of flight time and I don't think anybody really does. It's just like if any company ever says this drone gets 40 minutes, you're probably not getting 40 minutes. This drone says you get 33 minutes. I could probably squeeze out 33 minutes, but that last minute number 33, it's falling out of the sky because there's no more power. So if I fly it in the safety range, uh, by the time I get the safety warning, it's about 23, 24 minutes. By the time I land, it's around 25, 26 minutes of flight time. So that's what you can expect with this drone. That's why today I couldn't show you everything because I only have one battery and that's all I flew today. Now with that said, the drone does fly well. You know, Hubson has tweaked this. I've done firmware updates. It flies quite well. Uh, I have no issues with the flights. I never worry about it flying away on me or doing something it shouldn't do. It does everything I tell it to do and it does it well. And the screen in the app gives you plenty of warnings if something's not going as you expect it to the warnings that come on your screen display tell you exactly what you have done wrong and how to fix it so yeah it's it's really well it doesn't leave you out in the cold to try to figure out why the thing is not working the way you want it to everything is right there and it works quite well i don't have any issues with it another new feature on the hubson xeno 2 is the ability to update the firmware with your controller and phone just over the air pretty much over wi-fi if you want to call it that and uh, it's supposed to make it very simple because in the past, the Hubson Zeno and the Zeno Pro, nightmares to update the firmware. This is supposed to make it really simple. There's also the ability that you can plug a USB cable into the Zeno and into your computer, download some software and update it that way as well. Well, I'll tell you my experience. First off, the over the air did not work at all. I tried everything, different phones, different data, different everything, didn't work. So Hubson, it doesn't work. Second thing is your USB plug right here to do it by PC. Well, guess what? When I plugged in a USB cable right there, my USB unit went flying inside the drone, so I couldn't update it that way. Good old Hubson quality control happening there. But that leads me to Hubson support. I've always said Hubson support is minimal because that's what I keep hearing, and I've never used Hubson support in the past, but Hubson support are the ones who fix my problem. So when I told them exactly everything that's going on, they responded within, you know, 12 hours, and they basically said, okay, try this, try that, none of that worked. Finally, they sent me a couple of data files, said stick them on a micro SD card, stick them in the drone, power on the drone, and it will update and do everything properly, and it did, and it worked perfect. So thank you to Hubson Support. They were reactive, and at least they helped out. So the question then becomes, who then is the Hubson Zeno 2 for? Well, it's for somebody who can only afford $500 US, or that price range anyways. You pretty much only have this drone to choose from, and you have the 2020 Femi SE X8. That's the only other drone that's in that same price range. So those are your only two drones to pick from. So either one, you're going to be happy with. Just keep in mind that this drone, just like the Femi, those are budget drones for people that can't afford DJI drones. So 
When you buy a budget drone, you don't get obstacle avoidance. You don't get a lot of pro features. Although this one seems to have some pretty decent ones that you'd use quite often. And you don't get the build quality. You know, DJI and Autel have a really good build quality. This one here, the build quality is very plasticky. It's no different than like a $300 drone build quality. And uh, the Femi is no different. The Femi as well looks nice, but the build quality on that is kind of plasticky as well. But if I haven't already mentioned it, the build quality of a drone is important, but it's not as important as the video quality. So this here takes really good video quality at the 4K 30, 4K 60. So when you post that someplace, people look at the video quality and that's all they look at. They don't go, hey, that's awesome video quality, but do you know the drone that took it's really plasticky? Nah, they don't look at that. So, so you're saving a lot of money by only spending $500 and getting really good video quality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links to where you can get the Hups and Zeno. There might even be some discount coupons. Check below and check those links and maybe this is the drone for you at the price for you. If you have any questions on the Hups and Zeno too, post them below and the sun is out again. It keeps coming and going. Never out when I need it to be out. But for now, I'll say thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you in future videos with more reviews. Take care. And now we're at the part of the video where I'm going to do a super quick unboxing of the Hupson Zeno 2. Opening up the box, you can see a shoulder bag and everything's in here. The shoulder bag is very practical for carrying your Hupson Zeno around and all the components as well as storing it. Looking inside the shoulder bag, we can see the Hupson Zeno 2 and the controller over here. Let's take everything out and check them out piece by piece. Here we have the Hupson Zeno. It has a bit of weight to it. Compared to other drones on the market, it does look kind of plasticky, but that's typical for Hubs and Zeno due to the price. You're definitely not going to get, you know, like Autel or DJI quality. It's a very plasticky drone. On the bottom of the Zeno 2, you can see some new additions. We have infrared sensors and optical flow sensor. Over here, you have your power button for your battery, foldable props, brushless motors, foldable arms. I'm not sure if this camera picks it up, but the arms are a different color than the body. So the body is brilliant white, a little darker white toned down and then brilliant white for the legs. Taking a look at one side of the drone, this is your micro USB card slot. There's also a little button up top. That's probably for binding. And over here we have a USB port. Nothing on the rear of the drone and nothing on the opposite side. On the front of the drone you have this little piece of plastic right here, which is probably just a bumper because there are no obstacle avoidance sensors on this drone. And over here you have your plastic protector for the camera. Remove that. Here you can see the camera and our three axis gimbal. So the gimbal is for the purpose of when your drone does this. Flopping in the wind, the camera stays still. When your drone does this, starting and stopping, flying, your camera stays still. And when the wind is causing your drone just to yaw back and forth, the camera will stay straight. The battery is removed by pulling back on either side of these little clips here on the drone. Pull them back and the battery should come out. You can see on the top of the battery, it's a LiPo battery, 3800 milliamps at 15.2 volts. Next, we have the controller. The controller does have a display screen on it. I don't know if there's any power. Yes, there is some power. I'll turn it on and uh, there you can see there's a display screen. Can you see it? There's only one icon or two icons showing up right now because nothing's connected. If you pull out the front portion, that's where your phone goes and you can see the joysticks are down there. You can only fit a normal size phone. You could not fit a tablet in there. The buttons are labeled nicely on the front. Antennas flip up in the rear. And looking at the back, what do we have? We have a camera button on this side. We have our jog dial to move the gimbal up and down. We have our function control and our record video on this side. On the bottom, you have no buttons. On this side, you have your USB connector to connect to your cell phone. Also in the bag, you get the Zeno 2 user manual. You get the charging brick and the battery connector for charging everything up. You get a USB cable for charging up your controller. You get three types of cables in case you have an iPhone or an Android phone. You get plenty of spare props and a micro Phillips screwdriver to install them. And how much does the Hubson Zeno 2 weigh? Let's put that down. That is massive, 952 grams. Let's just check something here. 952 grams for the Zeno 2. Let's go Zeno Pro right here. 734 grams. And let's go to the original Zeno 1. What do we have? 719 grams. Here I have all three Zenos lined up. The original Zeno, the Zeno Pro, and the Zeno 2. And you can see that the Zeno 2 is massively large compared to these other guys. This is the original Zeno, and this is the Zeno 2. And you can even see when I put them this way, you see the size difference. The Zeno 1 had no sensors on the bottom, as well as the Pro had no sensors. And of course, the Zeno 2, that's where they added the sensors. And this brings me to the end of the unboxing segment, as well as the review of the Hopson Zeno 2. If you'd like to know more information about this drone, I'm going to put links below to where you can buy it on the Banggood website. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you in another video with many more drone reviews. Take care.